Shalom Alechem. We're going to be studying Bereshit 12. We're going to look at Abram and the covenants that were made that are so important and the name that was made of that covenant and how it pertains to us today. So, Bereshit chapter 12, Genesis 12, and yud heh vav -Heh said to Abram, Go yourself out of your land from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I show you, and I shall make you a great nation, and bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I shall bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. And in you all the clans of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram left as Yahweh commanded him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he set out from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the beings whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they came to the land of Canaan. And Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Morah. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. And Yahweh, yod heh appeared to Abram and said, To your seed I give this land. And he built there a slaughter place to yod heh who had appeared to him there. And from there he moved to the mountains east of, east of Beth-el. And he pitched his tent with Beth-el on the west and Ai on the east. And he built there a slaughter place to yud heh and called on the name of yud heh and Abram set out continuing towards the south, and a scarcity of food came to be in the land, and Abram went down to Mitzrayim to dwell there, for the scarcity of food was severe in the land. And it came to be, when he was close to entering Mitzrayim, he said to Sarai, his wife, See, I know that you are a beautiful woman to look at, and it shall be, when the, Mitzrite, the Mitzrites see you, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they shall kill me, but let you live. Please say you are my sister, so that it shall be well with me for your sake, and my life be spared because of you. And it came to be, when Abram came into Mitzrayim that the Mitzrayites saw the woman, that she was very beautiful, and Pharaoh's officials saw her and praised her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. And he treated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep and cattle and male donkeys and males and female servants, and female donkeys and camels. But yud vav plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not inform me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? And so I was going to take her for my wife. Look, here is your wife, take her and go. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Now, first we must 
take note that at this point in Abram's life, he had a great deal of possessions. Now, let's turn to chapter 15, and we're going to start in verse 1. After these events, the word of yud vav came to Abram in a vision. So, it says, after these events, you're going to have to go back and read chapter 14 of Bereshit. But, after these events, yud vav came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward is exceedingly great. And Abram said, Master yud vav Yahweh, what would you give me? seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, See, you have given me no seed, and see, one born in my house is, no one born in my house is my heir. And see, the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, This one is not your heir. But he who comes from your own body is your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look towards the heaven and the earth, heavens, and count the stars if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So are your seed. And he Abram, believed in yud vav and he reckoned it to him for righteousness. That is a key scripture. And he said to him, I am yud vav who brought you out of ur Kasdim to give you this land to inherit. That's the land of Ur, of the Kastim. And he said, Master Yahweh, whereby do I know that I possess it? And he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, and a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And I'll bet Abram just had each one of those. They were his favorites. And he took all these to him and cut them in the middle and placed each half opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds, and the birds of prey came down on the carcasses. And Abram drove them away. These were unclean birds, carrion, vultures, and eagles, etc. And it came to be, when the sun was going down, and a deep sleep fell upon Abram, that, see, a frightening darkness fell upon him. And he said to Abram, Know for certain that your seed are to be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. But the nation whom I s they serve I am going to judge, and afterwards let them come out with great possession." Now, as for you, you are to go to your fathers in shalom, in peace. You are to be buried at a good old age. Then, in the fourth generation, they shall return here. For the crookedness of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to be when the sun went down and it was dark, that seeing a smoking oven and a burning torch passing between those pieces. On the same day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, 
saying, I have given this land to your seed from the rivers of Mitzrayim, Egypt, to the great river of the Euphrates. With that in mind, well, let's finish it out because it gives some names which I always find interesting. We'll read that last verse again. This is Genesis 15, verse 18. On the same day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abraham, saying, I have given this land to your seed from the river of Mitzrayim to the great river Euphrates, with Canaanite and the Kenizzites and the Kodmanite and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaim and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Yebusites. And some of these are even the descendants of Abraham himself. That's quite interesting. All those seeds were perverted by one of his great-grandchildren, whose name was Amalek, who became the Amalekites, who was a sexual conquistador, if you will, and he mixed the seed of all the granddaughters of Abraham and perverted many of the lines. And that's why Yudhevavhe said, annihilate and wipe out the name of Amalek from off the earth. Now, in Bereshit chapter 17, it's going to talk about the covenant. Chapter 17, And it came to be, when Abram was ninety-nine years old, that yud vav appeared to Abram, and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me, and be perfect, and I give my covenant between me and you, and shall greatly increase you. And Abram fell on his face, and Elohim spoke with him, saying, As for me, look, my covenant is with you, and you shall become a father of many nations. And no longer is your name called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, because I shall make you a father of many nations, and I shall make you exceedingly fruitful, and make nations of you, and sovereigns shall come from you. And I shall establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be Elohim to you and your seed after you. And I shall give to you and your seed after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I shall be their Elohim. And Elohim said to Abram, Abraham, As for you, guard my covenant, you and your seed after you, throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you guard between me and you, and your seed after you, Every male child among you is to be circumcised, Brit Milah. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall become a sign of the covenant between me and you. The covenant is between yud and Abraham and his seed. Verse 12, 
and a son of eight days is circumcised by you every male in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with silver from any foreigner who is not of your seed. He who is born in your house and he who is brought bought with your silver has to be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And an uncircumcised sized male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, his life shall be cut off from among his people. He has broken my covenant. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, do not call her name Sarai, for Sarah is her name, and I shall bless her, and also give you a son by her, and I shall bless her, and she shall become nations, sovereigns of peoples are to be from her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Is a child born to man who is a hundred years old? Or is Sarah, who is ninety-nine years old, to bear a child? And Abram said to Elohim, O oh, let Yishmael live before you. And Elohim said, No, Sarah your wife is truly bearing a son to you, and you shall call his name Yitzhak, and I shall establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Yishmael, I have heard you. See, I shall bless him, I shall make him fruitful, and greatly increase him. He is to bring forth twelve princes, and I shall make him a great nation. By, but my covenant I establish with Yitzhak, whom Sarah is to bear to you at this appointed time next year. And when he had ended speaking with him, Elohim went up from Abram, and Abram took Ishmael his son, and all those born in his house, and all those bought with silver, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskins that same day as Elohim told them. And Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh. And when Yishmael, his son, was thirteen years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Now, we're going to stop there. We're going to remember what it says in the book of John, stating, Take your only my only begotten son in chapter 3. My only begotten son. When you look at Abram, he's saying in, in the next verses that we're going to look at, to take Abram, to take your only son. But we know that he has Ishmael from the, the, uh, the, the, helper of Sarah, Sarai, which was Hagar, and she had bore a son to Abraham named Ishmael, who it said right there, he shall prosper and make a great nation and twelve princes. There you get the Arabian and all of the other descendants that are not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are sons of Abraham. And then there are also the sons of Ishmael. And they become the, the Aramaic-speaking populations. Now, let's turn to Genesis 22.
Bereshit 22, and it came to, to be after these events that Elohim tried Abraham, and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I, Hineni. And he said, Take your son, now your only son, Yitzhak, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as an ascending offering at, on one of the mountains which I command you. And Abram rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him, and Yitzhak his son. And he split the wood for the ascending offering, and arose and went to the place where, which Elohim had commanded him. And on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place from a distance. So Abraham said to his young men, Stay here, with the donkey, while the boy and I go over there and worship and come back to you. And Abram took the wood of the ascending offering and laid it on Yitzhak, his son, would be on his shoulders. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. So there they're walking up Mount Moriah. He has his knife. He has Yitzhak, his son, carry the wood for the offering. And he's carrying the fire. Verse 7. And Yitzhak spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father... And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, See the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the ascending offering? And Abram said, My son, Elohim does provide for himself the lamb for an ascending offering. And the two of them went together. And they came to the place which Elohim had commanded him. And Abraham built a slaughter place there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Yitzhak his son and laid him on the slaughter place upon the wood. And Abram stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son, but the messenger of Yudhe called to him from the heavens and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Hineni, here am I. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the boy, nor touch him. For now I know that you fear, Elohim, seeing that you have not withheld your only son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and saw behind him a ram caught in a bush by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for an ascending offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of this place Yahweh Yira, as it is said to this day, on the mountain Yahweh provides. And the messenger of Yahweh called to Abraham a second time from the heavens and said, by myself I have sworn, declares Yudhevavhe, because you have done this, and you have not withheld your son, your only son, that I shall certainly bless you, and I shall certainly increase your seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sands which is on the seashore, and let your seed possess the gates 
of their enemies, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Then Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt there at Beersheba. Now, we're going to stop there. We, this is something that is quite interesting. He takes Yitzhak with the wood, the fire, and goes up into the place. And then, in verse 19, it says, Then Abram, Abraham returned to his young men, and they went up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt there in Beersheba, and it came to pass that after these events it was reported to Abraham, saying, See, Milcah too has borne children to your son, your brother Nahor. Okay, and it goes into the introduction of the wife for his son. But as he comes down that mountain, it says, Then Abraham returned to his young men. Where is Yitzhak? In fact, Yitzhak is not mentioned in chapter 23, and then in chapter 24, it says, And Abraham was old, advanced in years, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in every way. And Abraham said to the oldest servant of the house, I would think that would be Eleazar, who ruled over all that he had. Please put your hand under my thigh, so that I make you swear by yud he the Elohim of the heavens and the Elohim of the earth, that you do not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But go to the land and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son Yitzhak. And the servant said to him, What if the woman refuses to follow me to the land? Do I then take your son back to the land from which you came? And Abraham said to him, Beware, lest you take my son back there. Yahweh Elohim of the heavens, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my relatives, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, To your seed I give this land. He sends his messengers before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. So, the eldest servant goes to the land of Ur, he takes camels. It's a large procession of camels. And as he sits there, it says, Then the servant put his hand under the thigh. Oh, we went back a little too far. Okay, verse 10. And the servant took ten of his master's camels and left. For all the master's good gifts were in his hand. And he arose and went to Aram Naham Marim, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels kneel down outside the city by a fountain of water at evening time, the time when the women go out to draw water. And he said, Yahweh Elohim of my master Abraham, Please cause her to meet before me this day, and show loving commitment to my master Abraham. And then he puts a, a very puzzling question. He made a statement, a, a prophecy, if you will, that came true immediately. He said, Yahweh Elohim, my messenger, my, of my master Abraham, please cause her to meet b 
before me this day and show loving commitment to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here at the fountain of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your jar to let me drink, and she says, Drink and let me water your camels too. Let her be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Yitzhak. And let me know by this you have shown loving commitment to my master. Now let's get the picture here. The servant, the eldest servant who is named only once earlier, Eliezer, which means comforter, by the way, he's at the well in Haran, the land of Abraham that he was born in. And there is the well. It is a very big and deep well with stairs going down into the bottom of it. And you had to go down there to retrieve the water. It was a great deal of effort, and that is the reason they did it in the cool of the day. Verse 15, And it came to be, before he had ended speaking, that see Ribcha, who was born to Bethel, Bethuel, son of Milcah, the, the wife of Nahor, Abram's, Abraham's brother came out with her jar on her shoulder, and the young woman was very good-looking, a maiden, no man having known her, a Betula or an Alma, a virgin. And she went down to the fountain, filled her jar, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my master. And she hurried and let her jar down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, Let me draw water for your camels too until they are finished drinking. Let's look at that. There were ten camels. Each drink at least 30 gallons of water. How many trips up and down into that well did she go? And she hurried and emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the fountain to draw water and drew up for his camels. And watching her, the man remained silent in order to know whether yud he had prospered his way or not. And it came to be when the camels had finished drinking that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets from her, for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold and said, Whose daughter are you? Please inform me. Is there a room in your father's house for us to spend the night? And she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethel, Bethuel, Milcah, a son whom she bore to Nahor. And it goes through, he makes a, an agreement with Nahor, and her brother Laban comes up, and he then takes her away back to the tent of Abram. And it is not then until you see the bridegroom cometh. And Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yitzhak had sons through Jacob, and they become the twelve tribes. But this young lady, think of this, is prepared as the bride for the son, the set-apart son of Abraham. And Abram sent his servant, the eldest servant of his house, Eleazar, unnamed, 
which means comforter, and he sends him to prepare his bride for his son in the wilderness, and they aren't united until... So, in chapter 24 of Bereshit, in verse 58, it says, So they called Ribka and said to her, Are you going with this man? And she said, I shall go. So they let go Ribka, their sister and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Ribka and said to her, Let our sister become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and let your seed possess the gates of those who hate them. And Ribka and her young woman arose, and they rode on the camels, and they followed the man. So the servant took Ribka and left. And, 62, Yitzhak came from the way of Beer La Hai Roi, for he dwelt in the south. And Yitzhak went out to meditate in the field in the evening. And he lifted his eyes and looked and saw the camels coming. And Ribka lifted her eyes. And when she saw Yitzhak, she dismounted from her camel. And she had said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. So she took a veil and covered herself, and the servant told Yitzhak all the matters he had done. And Yitzhak brought her into his mother Sarai's, Sarah's tent, and he took Ribka, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Thus Yitzhak was comforted after the death of his mother. Now we're going to look at Yohanan chapter 3. But in particular, there is verse 29 that the word, our English word, bride, comes up. So we all kind of know Yohanan chapter 3, but let, let us read it from... Oh, let's look back. Verse 10. Yahshua answered, as is, he's speaking to Nick Damon. Yahshua answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know this? It was a question that was asked. How is a man able to be born when he is old? That was uh, brought out by Nicodemus in, in verse 4. Now, back at 211, Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and witness what we have seen, and, the, and you do not receive our witness. And if you do not believe when I spoke you about earthly matters, how are you going to believe when I speak to you about heavenly matters? And no one has gone up into the heavens except he who came down from the heaven, the son of Adam. And as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of Adam has to be lifted up so that whoever is believing in him should not perish but possess everlasting life. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but possess everlasting life. For Elohim did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth Son of Elohim. And I believe that is what Abraham believed. In verse 19 it says, And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. For everyone who is practicing evil matters hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But the one doing the truth comes to the light, so that his works are clearly seen, and they have been wrought in Elohim. After this, Yahshua and his taught ones came into the land of Yehuda, and he remained there with them, and was immersing. And Yohanan was also immersing in Ayin near Salim, because there was plenty of water there. And they were coming and were being immersed. For Yohanan had not yet been put into prison. Then a dispute arose between some of Yohanan's taught ones and the Uatim about cleansing. And they came to Yohanan and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have witnessed, See, he is immersing, and all are coming to him. And Yohanan answered and said, No man is able to receive any matters unless it is given to him from the heaven. And you yourself are witnesses for me that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. And verse 29, He that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friends of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him rejoice greatly because the voice of the bridegroom. So this joy of mine is complete. It is right for him to increase but me to increase, decrease. He who comes from above is over all. He who comes from the earth is of the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is over all. And what he has seen and heard that he witnessed, and no one receives his witness, he who receives his witness has set his seal that Elohim is true. For he that Elohim has sent speaks the words of Elohim. For Elohim does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and his given all into his hand. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim remains on him. So, going back to the bride, the bride is not the one that keeps the ways of the world. She is separated, sanctified, and she prepares herself for a time until the bridegroom comes. And when he comes, he prepares a place for his beloved, who keep his commandments and guard them, the right rulings, the mitzvot, and have and delight themselves in Shabbat, in the relationship, in the word of Elohim, and spending time with Abba, the Father, 
on Shabbat and knowing the name, the Kadosh name, yud heh and his son, the bridegroom who cometh, Yahshua Mashiach. May Shalom be manifested upon you. May the Shalom of Yahweh be all upon you and be blessed in that holy name. May His face shine upon you and give you His everlasting Shalom. Yivareka Yahweh v'yishmareka, Ya'er Yahweh panavaleka v'huneka, v'yashem l'cha shalom. Now, as wise maidens, prepare yourselves and have the oil of the Ruach with you, so when you go to meet the bridegroom, to be at the place that he has prepared for us, we have the oil needed, and we don't have to go to the merchants to purchase some and get locked outside the gate. We must eagerly seek his return and have an expectation of the imminency of the day of Yahweh. Prepare yourself as a bride and come out of Babylon, O oh my people, Shalom.